We are going to speak today about the one curve that is going to tell you everything about the maintenance systems or the maintenance strategies or the maintenance types of different activities that you are doing in your maintenance and how they are related together and how they are related with the lifetime or the status of your equipment. So if we have a simple curve like this one, this axis represents the performance of the machine or the status of your machines. Here it starts from zero, which is total failure. And here is a pure best performance, 100% performance of the machine. And on this line, that's the timeline of the equipment or the, again, the time axis. This curve is usually, was usually called the PF curve. So the PF curve here, that's the P, sorry for my handwriting, and that's the failure range. Okay, so that's the P. The P is the potential failure, or you can it refers to the predictive activities that you are doing in this area. And here, that's the failure where when you start to ha uh, have some failure in the function, the function is not complete. For example, if you're having a bump, the bump is not delivering the quantity needed, so it's less than the needed. Then that's a potential or uh, a function failure or partial function, uh, partial function failure, or the bump is having some leakage, so that's a partial function failure, and many other partial function failures starts here so you detect that there is a failure in the equipment physically you detect it with sound you detect it with uh, performance you detect it with your ears with your smell and so on and when you range when you reach uh, this range that's uh, a failure that you cannot retrieve you need to take some action so that's the area of the reactive activities based on the reliability centered maintenance or the rcm without really you can work in this area but only for some uh, equipment, uh, which is the analysis said that there is no feasible action that can be done before this area. Otherwise, don't take the risk to work in this area. This area is the most comfortable part, which is, it starts here from, if you had done uh, your design here and then you had done your installation. So nowadays the curve was extended, it's DIPF curve. So it's that's design installation. And because you need to consider maintenance in the design, and then you need to consider maintainability during the design and during the installation. And during the installation, you take the footprint, what they call the footprint, the initial records of all the parameters of your machines, of the performance of your machine, the current consumption, the pressure, the flow, and everything you take uh, from your machine, the timing, anything. You take all these data, that's your for, uh, footprint during the installation. And after that, during this proactive activities time, where the equipment is performing at its 100% of uh, performance or 100% of efficiency, of productivity, it's uh, stable, uh, nothing happens to the machine, the machine is perfect 100%. During this time, you are preparing the maintenance activities, preparing the lubricants, preparing the spares, preparing the potential, uh, how to say, the, the KPIs that you are going to, to detect, preparing the timing, preparing your tools, preparing whatever is needed to be prepared to do your maintenance activities. During this time, when you do some activities during this time, that's proactive activities. And most of the time it's based on time and um, or number of operations. Usually you like to take the time and or the number of operations to work in this area before going to any potential failure. And then you reset to the best performance again and, and so on. The criticality about working like this is that the maintenance cost is very high. There is a potential to work during all this region, green region, where you can apply some predictive analysis. But if you don't apply any predictive analysis and just you work on the operation uh, hours or the operation times and so on, either you work in this area or you might be working all over here. Or you might be working all over here, not only here in this area. No, you might be working also in this area. Okay. Or you might have extended to this area and then you start changing the part and so on because you don't know, you don't have any predictive, you don't have any measurements to say. So that's here. You're working only time paced or counter paced and you don't put any predictive activities. When you put some predictive measurements, what we call predictive measurements or predictive actions, it's like uh, when you make some predictive actions, it's like when you make some oil analysis, uh, if you have transformer or some oiling of a gearbox, when you have some uh, lubricants, you make analysis for your lubricants and so on and you make sure that it's not degraded its quality is not degraded its best quality so you are working in this area here 
the first part here is for the oil so when you make oil analysis or lubricant analysis you are here after that if you are adopting the ultrasonic measurements it's you are working here so the ultrasonic detects a failure here after the ultrasonic you have the vibration analysis the vibration analysis detects a failure here because now here it's only some changes in the oil or in the grease or in the lubricant something like that here when you can you cannot hear it with your own ear when you hear it with your own ear you are in this range but when you cannot hear it with your own ears and the ultrasonic can hear it as a predictive measure then you started to have starting of a failure or potential failure is about to happen but it didn't happen yet but there's some signs for it after it can detect it by the sound some vibration occurs after the vibration occurs some heating occurs so when the heating occurs you are here that's the thermal measurement so that's the sequence so, so that's you have the oil analysis then you have the ultrasonic then you have the vibration and then the infrared measurement or the thermographical measurements you can see already some heat it's these uh, thermal measurements basically or is applied if you can think about it it's main importance because i used it in the electrical part or in the high current part and in the high power uh, electrical substations and so on you have some equipment that is totally stable uh, nothing is happening to it you stop every now and then to make some retighting some visual inspection closed because you cannot come to a close proximity of these uh, uh, parts while they are in operations for inspection and it's running but sometimes when some looseness happens when some sp little sparks happens some deterioration in the quality of a capacitor or, or bolt or something like that happens it you start to have some heating of one part relative to the other parts that's the beauty of the uh, thermography okay so here you are working in a predictive activities now if you manage to extend the time you see here if we said that this axis is the time if you manage to manage to extend the time from here to here okay that's great you had added already some time for the uh, production to operate more and you had uh, diluted your maintenance cost you had extended your maintenance cost over a longer time so it is diluted the maintenance cost so instead of doing uh, one or two maintenance activities per month you will be doing one maintenance activity per month and when you start to detect the signs of potential failure then you can start preparing preparing for this activity and uh, to make this maintenance to change this part to make your tightening to stop for some, for some time for the inspection and you can solve it with a smaller tightening 10 minutes 15 minutes of a stoppage can save a, a big failure and and so on so that's actually this curve is intended that you understand that in this region when you work totally bluntly without any uh, predictive activity of inspection also i didn't I forgot to tell you if you are here maybe you are doing some uh, stoppage for the equipment to make some inspection so the inspection comes here so you are making a balance between the maintenance cost and the failure cost because the failure is costly you cost sudden stoppage of the equipment uh, loss of production time loss even of production material some cascaded failures and so on so the, the failure cost is is heavy is, is is high so you need to balance between the maintenance cost also you don't need to to invest too much in doing uh, maintenance and every time you change the parts while they are in excellent conditions that's too much high cost for the maintenance you cannot reach the best practices of the maintenance cost but by working only in this region so you need to work in this middle region which is using the predictive activities you're protective with oil analysis you're protective with um, uh, some ultrasonic measurement with vibration measurement with some uh, infra infrared measurement or photography or you can make open and inspection there's another free or uh, free resource for the predictive measurements which is simply the measurements that is coming from the field you can put it here for example those measurements that are coming from the field i'm speaking about the measurements that you are taking for example for the pressure for the flow and so on so actually some pump is running i give the pump example because there is no working place that is not having a pump I mean, even i'm not i'm from the electrical field basically but i'm giving the pump example because that's the most easiest that is, can be understood by everyone so the pump is having a delivery pressure and is having a delivery uh, flow uh, or a required amount of flow but it's if the pump is working in this region or at this level for example simply that's the performance of my pump okay so uh, usually it is the pressure or the delivery or the fluid delivering is it's working here so that's its perfect condition but the alarm condition will come here for example and the trip condition or the total failure condition will come here 
Okay, so you have a margin already here. So if you can detect any change in this margin, so I'm working a little bit down here or a little bit down here. If you can detect this from the uh, from the measurement tools that you are having of the pressure and flow, you can simply take it on, on a screen in the uh, uh, operation room and make some trending for it. And then you find that your pressure is falling a little bit. So then you go and inspect. That's free of cost. Uh, you already installed some sensors in the field that will uh, can convey to you the status of the equipment. So now you know the status of the equipment, it starts to deteriorate without measuring anything, without measuring vibrations, without measuring ultrasonic, without measuring anything, you can see that your equipment starts to deteriorate and then you can make, go and make inspection in, or plan an inspection in any stoppage and so on without using any extra tools. Still, that's not available for every equipment because during the, the operation, the status of the machine is different totally from the status of the machine during storage, especially for the electrical equipment. Yani during the high power substation, if you are energizing the high power station, the stress and the load on the equipment is totally different when you shut down it completely, make safety conditions, and then you go inside to inspect while the, uh, the equipment is cold. You, you will not get any indication unless you move or in every bolt and every nut in the uh, high voltage area or in the equipment, in the high voltage equipment, to check there is a problem or not. But the pump, as I told you, like this, you will have the pressure falling a little bit. That's free indication. The temperature, for example, if the temperature is increasing a little bit, yani, okay, okay. now you have the, the trip here, but it, is, it starts to increase the temperature of the, of the part I'm cooling. That's free uh, indication that there is a problem about to happen. Then I can make some analysis and a check in the field. So usually, while we are making the protective uh, activities, that's very important note. We need to compare those activities to some values. So from where we can get these values? We get these values from two important sources. One important source, what we call standard values, you get it from the supplier, the manufacturer, from the best practices uh, available online or on, on the forums and so on. And you have, uh, during the installation here, as we said, during the installation here, you take a, a footprint record and you compare your performance according to this record. Then you know that your performance is stable it's 100% performance, it's 90%, it's 85% performance, you can reach by comparing. Usually, when you make some predictive activity, usually you make comparing. Either the one who is supplying you with the tool that you are using for the predictive measure measurement is telling you that when you have uh, four decibel, for example, or you have eight decibel, that's uh, too high risky change, or four decibel, that's uh, an alarm change, in the values you are measuring with ultrasonic, for example, or when the temperature increases above 50 degrees or 60 degrees or 70 degrees, if you are making some uh, infrared photography for your equipment, then you have this increase in temperature is uh, alarming, this is unsafe and, and so on. But usually you need some values. If you can make your own standards while the equipment is working healthy, you take some measurements and then after some time take another measurements and you see if there's a, ch uh, a change. As I told you here, that's free of charge. You have the pressure, the flow, the temperature of many of uh, parts or, or many parts of your equipment available already as uh, trends in the PLC and on the HMI on, on your screens. And then you can change, detect any flow before arriving to the alarm, before arriving to the trip, and then you prepare to take action. So as I told you, the DIPF or the PF curve, it's one of the of the tools that will tell you everything, will tell you everything. You can understand the complete maintenance paradigm from understanding only this curve, proactive activities, predictive activities, uh, reactive activities, or the in the failure region or the partial failure region. And here, that's potential failure. So it's about to fail, but there is some time then you can take corrective actions and plan for them uh, great in a great way and that's where when you work totally without any predictive you work only on this area so you are spending too much uh, in maintenance cost and here you are spending too much in the failure cost so you need to work in this region which is the middle region between the proactive and the reactive activities that's what we call the predictive activity so it's one curve the bf curve that can tell you everything about the uh, maintain your maintenance system and you can understand how you are performing and what are the areas that you can enhance your performance in the description of this video you will find uh, links to our fiverr services uh, our uh, direct contact and to the maintenance trainings we are offering you can join any of them like the video subscribe share the information and wait for the coming videos with more insights from the maintenance management mind. See you in the coming videos.